Today I'm going to share with you a fantastic hike that you can do in Northeast Phoenix even when it's 100 degrees. Hi, I'm Brees, the president of Vaucluse, where we love to sweat less and explore more. And today I'm taking you back to the McDowell Sonoran uh, Reserve, where if you had seen a uh, previous video, I uh, walked you through a hike that I had done and it was getting quite hot and even a 400 foot incline of elevation was making me sweat a whole lot and really heating over, you could say overheating my body was very, very strenuous and I wanted to go even higher, but I thought, well, you know, it's really, really getting hot. And one of the key things in, uh, in Phoenix, and if you're hiking anywhere, kind of like where it's a desert, is you really have to pay attention to your body. And if your body starts saying it's getting a little too hot, even if you haven't done a whole lot and you're like, I typically do, you know, a thousand in elevation, I typically out for a few hours, you really can't do that out here. But this hike, so in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve, I'm looking at my notes, which you're gonna be able to see as well. I'm gonna be uh, sharing with you my hike. I'm gonna be sharing you with some of the stats and also the links are gonna be right below. So you can, if you ever find your pl yourself around here, you can definitely repeat my hike for yourself. So located in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve, which, um, and I'm reading here, is a large, permanently protected, sustainable desert habitat in Scottsdale, Arizona. The preserve encompasses some 30,500 acres and is the largest urban park in the United States. So key points are northeast of Phoenix, east of North Scottsdale, and I started at the Gateway Trailhead and I ended at the Gateway Trailhead. So what I pretty much did is I did a figure eight and you'll see that. Um, you can probably just do it in a loop, but I did a figure eight because I wanted to go up where the incline was as gradual as possible and then go down where it was a little bit more steep. Nonetheless, even the going down wasn't that steep. However, I really wanted to just make sure that, you know, I was gonna be out for about an hour the temperature did start. It doesn't sound hot. You know, it started at 73, uh, ended at 78. However, when you're talking about Phoenix, Arizona, and the desert, it doesn't really get uh, that cool at night, at least not during the summer. So even in the 70s, it's, it, it gets pretty warm. So I started on the Saguaro Trail, which heads directly east. It's the most popular trail because it's the in and out of the uh, the gateway trailhead so most everybody has to take this from the parking lot and then but i followed i went south um, as opposed to going north when you go north there's a whole lot more options uh, but it also is a higher elevation you got to start climbing quite quickly i went south into what is the gateway trail loop and the levee trail and this side of the park is much flatter as you can see by the um, the topography map that I'm showing. So it's really, really, really comfortable. Um, of course, it's get, it's getting really warm, but actually, when I went down, I could feel the cool breeze, and my body was cooling down quite uh, quite quickly. Going up, still getting a little warm, but at the same time, for the hour hike that I did. It was really, really nice. The length, I did about 3.5 miles, so a good decent hike. The elevation gain was 344, and that was split up, I would say, into two different sections, a little bit of incline and then flat, and then a little bit more of an incline and then decline the rest of the way. So really, really, really comfortable. Moving time, just a little over an hour. Uh, average pace, a pretty good pace, I would think, of, of 20. So that was the hike. Now, one of the key aspects of this hike was my cool dry frame, which I have right here, that I had a very, I believe this is an 18 liter or 15 liter Osprey, which I attached our cool dry frame to the backpack. It's really important to understand that it's not just how hot it is outside that's gonna make you sweat, it's also whether you can sweat it out. So if it's hot, you're gonna sweat. It's impossible. I mean, some people don't sweat, but most people, you know, they're going to sweat. You have to be able to sweat. And the key fact here is only sweat that evaporates has any ability to cool the body. So if you're sweating, but you have your backpack on you and um, it's just stuck right there 
and you start getting soaked, your, your body, you're actually limiting how your body can stay cool. So the question is, is like if you're out hiking and you have this massive backpack that's pretty much soaking up the sweat, you're not allowing your body to do what it really wants to do and that's cool down. It's sweating and it's hoping that, well, that sweat's gonna evaporate. If it doesn't evaporate, your body's not gonna be any cooler. So this means you have to allow sweat to leave your body and that's what this frame does is that if you can see, and you also you'll be able to see in the video, is that when I put this backpack on, when I put this backpack on, there is a space between my backpack, between me and the backpack. And you can use any size backpack that you want. Obviously, I've got a small one. I'm only out for an hour. I don't need a whole lot of stuff. We designed this so that it can fit any backpack uh, between 15 liter, even smaller, all the way up to 65 liters. So if you wanna stay cooler out when you're hiking and you wanna let that sweat evaporate, especially if you have a big backpack, uh, we highly recommend that you check out our cool dry frame, um, which you can do with the link below. See you on the trails.